it's Lorian and today is book review Friday and I am talking about Battle Magic by Tamara Pierce. This is in the Circle of Magic series is technically the ninth book to read. You read this after you finish the Circle Opens Quartet but before Melting Stones or Will of the Empress is where you're supposed to read this. However, if you want to read this as a standalone novel, you absolutely can. You just don't know who Abu Meme is. You don't know who Briar's sisters are or anything about Lark other than what the book describes, but it's okay to pick up on its own. It's designed for people who are interested. Maybe I want to read a quartet, maybe I don't. But for the record, the quartets are only about as long as this book is anyway. So you can watch this. I'm going to try not to be spoilery, so let's start it. Briar, Rosethorn, and Evie are traveling around the world. Rosethorn and Briar want to see the different gardens of the world. And in Street Magic, Briar picked up Evie, who was a runaway slave girl in a gang, and he saved her and taught her how to handle her stone magic. So they've been traveling around since then, and while visiting a country of religious freedom that is considered, what, I can't pronounce the name of the country, Gyeongje? Gyeongje? I don't know. In the country of Gyeongje or Ganje, staying with the god king, who, who can have different gods and spirits that are worshipped and things come in and talk through him. They are invited to go to the giant empire of Yangjin, where the emperor invites them to see his spectacular gardens which are world renowned. And there they learn that he is a tyrant and a monster. After leaving there, they find out that the country that they were previously at is under attack and so they go to the aid of the god king. I really like this book. I really like Tamara Pierce's writing. I have loved every book of hers I've ever picked up before. So it was no surprise that I gave this like a four out of five stars. I like that this is pretty dark. She doesn't normally go so dark as this. She kind of does in Lady Night, but in Lady Night it was depressing and it was painful to read. Very, very painful to read. I did not like Lady Night. I think I gave it a 2.5 out of five stars. But this one got four out of five stars because now she's heading the heavier topics of war and torture and the slaughter of innocents and the destruction of entire nations and then slavery and all these dark, 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 dark things. But she does it with happiness involved and lightness and this overwhelming sense they're going to be okay. They're going to get through this. They may end up scarred, they may end up with some pretty severe problems, and Evie certainly does, but they're gonna be okay, and I loved that. I love that we get to see the characters develop. I didn't read Battle Magic, because I don't think it was out when I did, or Melting Stones before I picked up The Will of the Empress, which is why I recommend you read this first, because there's a big jump. Not so much the others, but Briar especially. There's this huge jump of character from Street Magic to Will of the Empress. And this is one of the reasons why. He has seen terrible, terrible things. He has come out with some pretty bad scars. There's this terrible, sad event that changes Briar pretty much forever, and I don't think he's the same kid. He was always kind of a kid, and even at the beginning of this, he wasn't really so much of a kid, but he was growing up. This is really his coming of age story. For the others, it really was what happens in the circle opens. That them getting students is enough to mature them, but Briar pretty much stays the same. And then when Will of the Empress, he's really different. He is sleeping around a lot. He is talking with guards in a different way. He seems so much more serious, and yet he seems lighthearted to cover the fact that he is dealing with some serious things, which he always kind of has, but he was a lot more serious as a kid. He lightened up over the years with his sisters, as the four of them consider themselves siblings. And then in The Will of the Empress, he's so different. They all have trouble getting along with Briar, and Sandry is like, who is this guy? He He's so different. Well, with what happened through this, it's understandable the choices he makes in that book. Because he has killed people, and he's seen people be butchered mercilessly, and he's always seen the darker side of the world, because, you know, he was in a gang, and he's been beaten, and he's seen people beaten to death before and stuff. But on a massive scale, entire cities wiped out, entire countries enslaved. This is the first time he really sees that, and it hits him pretty hard. And I like that. Evie, we get to see go through this horrific event 
and she has a breakdown and she basically has PTSD. It was a good plot device because Evie really is one of the biggest victims of this war, is what happens to her. And it's heartbreaking and it's so sad and yet we see her determined to piece her life together and to keep going forward and I can't wait to read Melting Stones and see her grow even more. We finally get to see what happens to Rose Thorn after, you know, she almost died. Because the circle opens were really, really short, I never got inside Rose Thorn's head. I could understand Lark, I could understand Nico, I could understand Daja's teacher, but you never really get inside Rose Thorn's head. She's very gruff and serious, and you don't know why she has this mean streak almost, and yet she can be so tender hearted. Well, this time we get to see from her perspective for one third of this gigantic novel. And it's great to see that from her and to learn more about her. Also, she's bisexual, and that was something that was never clear. Her and Lark are together, but, you know, in the eyes of children, you can't really tell. They think they're together. They might be. They might not be. It doesn't really matter to them. Yeah, they're together. <laughs> they're definitely together. Lark is her lover and her, her mate, but she is in an open relationship, and she's bisexual, so she normally sleeps with guys. And there's actually this line where Briar knows that Lark knows that Rose Thorn sleeps around, and Lark is okay with it. And Briar knows that Rose Thorn knows that Briar's not okay with it, but he's not going to say anything about it because he doesn't really agree with that. And it kind of shows, you know, different lifestyles and how sometimes they clash, but at the end of the day, you can love someone past that. And that's what I liked about it because, you know, I have a lot of friends who have lifestyles that I don't approve of or agree with in the slightest, but just like Briar does, I look past it. They know I don't approve and they don't care and I love them anyway. <laughs> That's pretty much what it's like and I like to see that finally put inside of a book where it's okay to disagree but you also know at the end of the day it's not really your business, it's not your life, you can't control it and that's fine. I did not expect that actually out of Tamara Pierce because she's not the nicest lady. I followed her for a while on Tumblr and she made some posts that were really I did not approve of, I did not like, I didn't want to deal with it. I stopped following her because she was so in your face about things. So having that put in here was nice because I don't approve of a lot of things and it's okay to disapprove so long as you love them anyway. I love the character of the God King. He is so cool. At first you see it and Briar feels bad because there's this kid and he's even younger than Briar. He's only Evie's age so he's like 10 or 12. He's the ruler of a nation and then through the course of the book, you learn just how much of a wonderful, great, and powerful ruler he is. And he's not intimidated by the Emperor at all. He hates war, he doesn't want there to be war, but he is not afraid of dealing with it and taking command of entire armies and taking command with battle and dealing with whole cities being lost to war and entire villages slaughtered, all of them, down to the last child, all the animals too. I like that. We don't always get to see that in a child ruler. Usually they're being manipulated and they're very naive and that's what's so great. He is not naive at all. He is very tough. He is willing to bide his time to take control of the situation and it's just cool to see that. I think honestly out of the whole book he is my favorite character is the God King. Parahan also is great. I like his sister a lot but I really like Parahan. How he isn't afraid to show fear at times. We get to see this big burly tough guy and he's afraid and he's afraid most of the book. He has a lot of fear and he has a lot of reason to be afraid all the time. Having that come from this big buff prince guy is great. We see him break down in fear and in pain and in grief and we see him cry and I like that a lot. If you read the original quartet, The Circle of Magic, you ha get to see Briar and Rose Thorn use their power in war. Well, it wasn't even war, it was in a pirate attack on their city, but this is a real full-on war that they're swept up into and we get to see them really, really use their magic and we get to see Evie use her magic especially with a character who's going to come forward. I'm not going to say what he is exactly, but his name is Luvo. I really loved seeing that. It was such this different side. You know, we get to see a lot of war in her Tortal books, 
in this, you know, it's just about mages who are mostly peaceful and we get to see them fight and I like that. All in all, I think this is probably the best of Tamora Pierce. I love her Keladry books, especially Squire. Squire is one of my favorites, if not my favorite, but I think this is even better because this can stand as a standalone. This is part of a bigger universe and yet on its own it's great whereas Squire you have to have read quite a few books for it to make sense. Especially you have to have read First Test Page then Squire and then you should read Lady Knight even though I don't like Lady Knight very much at all. This is kind of all of those smushed in a one with a great story taking less time in the other universe and it's, it's so good. It's so good. You guys need to pick this up. I really really want it. Um, I wish I could show you the back where it has this really cool inlay on it. So I really want it in hardback, but I'm on a book buying ban, even though I've already asked people to buy me quite a few books and my stack in my closet's a little insane. So I've been working with family and friends to try to fix that. <laughs> yeah, things are getting out of control, but I really, really want it. It's really, really good. Y'all really need to pick up Tamara Pierce books, even if you don't like her on Tumblr, like I don't. Dude, she's a great writer. Y'all need to read her. Alright, that's it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please give this video a thumbs up. If you enjoyed it, subscribe to see more every Friday as a book review unless something's going on. For the record, I'm trying to get a job, so I may end up having to cut back how much videos I do from three a week to two a week or something. I may do it not even three a week, but something like six a month. Something like that. I'm not quite sure. Y'all will have to stay tuned. I'm gonna try to keep up with it, but I'm not sure. Editing can take a while. Good luck with your reading and I'll see you the next video. Bye! And I am talking about Battle Magic by Tamora Pierce. That's not her name. And in, in, and, oh gosh dang it, I can't talk. And in, not Battle Magic. Briar, street magic. Have the different spirits of king uh, different spirits of kings. Different spirits of <laughs> But on the way out they but just on the blah. I really like this book. I liked Tamora Tam Tamora Tamara. I really liked blah. I like this book. I really liked Tamora I'm all getting chilled children. <laughs> Them all getting children! No, that's not what happens. They're all teenagers. They're like 14. Did I say C? Does it sound? <laughs> if you read The Circle Opens, not The Circle Opens, but his name is Lutho. Not Lutho. Luvo. Yeah, Luvo. Pick up Tamora Pierce. Tamara Pierce. Not Tamora. Yeah, I may... Yeah. Hmm. <laughs>